Let's create a new layer and move the four roof slabs to this layer, so we can easily toggle their visibility. Note that we can change their layer using the rollover tips. We'll create the rafters by extruding this boundary and slicing the resulting solid. For this next step, we will temporarily turn off the subtract behavior of push-pull by going to the settings and typing in push-pull. If we now push-pull this rafter so that it goes through the insulation layer of the wall, we see that this volume is not subtracted from the wall. This is an interference that we will solve later. Now that we've specified where the rafter ends, we want to copy this to the other side as well. We'll do this with Propagate Linear. The base solids are the wall and the rafter. We want to specify where the rafter ends, so we'll use its end face as detail object. By pressing enter, we see that the rafter on the other side of the roof now also has the correct geometry. We will copy these two rafters to the other end of the roof, again by using Propagate Linear. You could view these two rafters as elements connecting the two concrete ring beams. Thus, our base solids are the ring beams, and our detail objects are the two rafters themselves. We'll choose to copy this detail as a copy and accept the highlighted suggestion. Note that a small exclamation mark appears to indicate that an interference will be introduced when applying this suggestion. Next, we'll copy these rafters and repeat this copy, so that the entire length of the building is covered. Finally, we will slice the rafters to make an L-shaped roof. 